there's my wax solution. Now you put your wax solution in the boiling water. Now what that does, it melts the particles of wax that are inside your wax solution, so they become liquid, okay? If they're not melted, especially on this cool level like this, what happens is they become little particles of wax. And I, I see it on all the time where you see these people doing finish coat videos and it all looks good when it's all nice and shiny and you've got a dark color and it's reflecting and it looks all bright and shiny. But if you have a close look on a lot of those videos, you'll see that they have um, a shitload of, um, how would you put it, a shitload of spots that they've got bubbles and all sorts of things on it. So what they probably need to do, so I'm just making sure this is dry, a bit of acetone, just where the water was coming out of it. See that, how it dried it? Perfect. What they need to do is concentrate more on making it so you don't see bubbles. Okay? Now, I've got to put a piece of tape on this fin here, and that's to stop any resin from dripping on it. Because it happens all the time. You see the, the videos and it's all shiny and it looks amazing when you put a finish coat on, but look, there's only one person that gets excited about a good finish coat, and that's the person that's got to cut the board back. And I've seen a few of the videos and they're just covered with uppers. And um, so you think, oh God, I wouldn't want to be cutting that back. I'd spend more time keeping your brushes clean, um, straining your resin before you put it on the board, all those sort of things to try and get rid of any of those um, particles because if they're covered in gritty particles, it's a shit to cut back. Simple as that. So I know it's easy to do a finish coat video and you know, especially if you do a, a dark blue board and there's lights behind it. Oh, it looks great. Until you hold the camera at a certain angle. You just look at it. Next time you see one of those finish coat videos, I'm gonna point it out on this one. Have a look how it looks. Because this board, I'm not cutting back. I'm relying on the finish of the board to be perfect. Now how I'm gonna do that, look I'm running out of tape. <laughs> I'll use that bit up. Um, how I'm gonna do that is by straining my resin as well and oh, I'm down on my last shit tape. Am I? Yeah, I have to get some more. Um, straining your resin, making sure your board's perfectly dust free and that's how you get a perfect finish coat. A perfect finish coat, you don't want to have any uppers or particles in it, okay? That's pri priority before anything. And I've seen it, I've seen the videos where guys might finish coat five and it looks shit house. The things are covered in dust. So, the other thing you do too, Put a little bit of acetone on your hands and wipe the board like that too. This picks up any dust particles. Okay, so I can feel this now and that's pretty well particle free, which means I've got a pretty good chance of doing a good finish coat. Now, finish coat part, very easy. You get one of your stockings. I know it's overkill, but I like overkill. Put that there. Now get my resin. Roughly that much. I go by eye. It's about it's four, just under 400. Your stocking, your stirring stick. Now I'm going to put my styrene in first, but first I'm going to take my brush which only ever gets washed in clean acetone, never dirty, and it gets stored in its own container so there's no dust particles in there. So, you'll have to do it without us, I can't get away. Okay, now I'm putting four teaspoons of styrene, 
One, two, three, four. Okay, now I'm gonna put four teaspoons of my heated up wax. This has been in boiling, boiling water. Okay, so it's gonna be perfectly clear. See that? One, two, three, four. Okay, so what that means is I've got a chance now to stir this in before the resin cools, it shouldn't because it's 22 degrees. And there's gonna be no particles of wax. They're all liquid. So if I can get those particles of wax that I've made liquid to mix into the resin, they'll remain li liquid. They won't go back to wax. It's only in the, um, in the styrene it'll do that. When it's mixed with resin, it'll sort of become, you know, entwined with the resin and it won't go, um, unless you get a really low temperature. But for what I'm doing here, it won't. It won't. Now, I don't want it to take too long to go off. So I'm gonna do this 12 mil finish coat. Okay, I'll give that a good stir. As I stir about 50 times. Okay, that's stirred in. The finished resin looks beautiful. You put your sock over the top of it, your stock and sock, and if there's any foreign particles that have fallen in there, that should catch it. Clean your brush. Brush looks good. Now, just pour this on. As I said, I'm not cutting this board back. This finish coat is it. It's harder to do this finish coat that's not going to be cut back than it is to do a normal finish coat. It's actually, you've got to get this perfect. All right, so I start around here. And this is called a natural finish coat. In the old days, they were so busy, they didn't have time to cut them back. And they just were, that's why you see a lot of boards with this finish uncut. And they just didn't have time. Okay, and in the real early days in Australia, they just didn't have the knowledge. I was talking to um, Gordon Woods, and he was one of the first ones to make the balsa boards in Australia. And he told me they just didn't know. They just didn't have much experience with the resin and so forth. They just didn't cut them back. They thought, hang on, this is looking way better than what we used to do. We don't have to cut it back. I'll go across. These lines from the brush will show up in the wax pattern that's left. Now I do this on my 50s pig, 60s pig and my balsa pig. Get rid of that, I'll have to do that again. There's a hair right there. Oh, I've got it. I think I've got it. And I'll come back and get it with the blade. There we go. Once around the outside, is just making sure it's all perfect. So I'll leave that there, I'll get my blade. I've got one little hair here. I'll get rid of that. There we go. I'll just check for any more. Ah, looks pretty good. Is that one there? Might be. Tiny little. There we go, 
I've got that. I'll just shut this for a sec because I don't want it to get too hot in here. I see you can see hardly any uppers in it. I see those three. I see those finish go videos and I always laugh sometimes. Like, see how there's no uppers? One little one there, you're covered in them. You know, just have a look and you'll you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, I've got a little separation there, so I just get a tiniest bit. Okay, drop that on here. There you go, that'll settle down. Just checking for any irregularities or anything. It's looking good. Remember, this is going to be the finish. This is going to be what people see that's it but this is like they did it old school okay that's why it doesn't have to be perfect perfect but it certainly has to be better than what you see on a lot of videos where they got uppers everywhere now the reason i don't have too many uppers see watch how i'm cleaning my brush i only do it in clean acetone it wastes a little bit but not much okay clean acetone no dirty acetone like in that, even if it's washed two brushes, because what happens is it picks up particles of acetone and resin that's gone off. So you keep it clean like that, and you put it back into a clean acetone bucket like that. Okay, that's how you keep your brush perfect. You never use that one for filler coating. That's the one I use for pigment colors. That's the one I, I use for finish coats. My filler coat one's different. You can have particles all over. Hang on. Gotta turn this on, sorry. There we go. You can have particles in your filler coat one because that gets sanded with 80 grit, but not in this one here. Now, just waiting to see that gel. Okay, that's settling nicely. You still have a couple of little ones around here where the weave of the violin has been touched slightly. It always brings up a little upper. <coughs> Excuse me. But that's settling nicely. See how the, how the um, uh, what do you call it, the panel is slightly raised? That's perfect. You want that as well. I'm just going to open this door up because I've got the aircon on. This will bring a bit of heat in here. But see how it's settling nicely. Okay, absolutely beautiful. The wax is about to start rising. I can see it already. Now I'll just check this. Not there yet, soon. So what it does, as it goes off, the wax starts coming to the surface. Instead of having this beautiful, clean, clear, it becomes like has a slight satin feel to it. And it has like a wax, um, rises to the top and stops it from being sticky. Right, so I'm just checking that here. That's just about the gel. I'll just wait for it. There's no hurry. With this one, I will be wet and drying just the bead down a bit, not the rail. Okay, only half inch over the bead. Most old boards had the bead left on it. But we're just going to take the bead off because a lot of people mightn't relate to it, I suppose. <coughs> Righto, that's gelled. So now I take the tape off. Slowly because you don't want to flick resin onto the bottom of the board or up over to the top. See there, you can just see the wax coming up. You gotta watch what time of the day you do this too. You don't do it at night time because if you get an insect flying in and land on it, it fucks the whole board. So there's a lot more pressure doing it this way. That's why you won't get the, you know, six one shortboard guys doing this type of thing because um, it's just too, too risky. You know, a lot of risk involved. See how it's gelled? All right, let's clean my hands. There we go, so that's, now the wax is gonna dull up even more. I'll throw this outside so it doesn't heat up. Beautiful. We did the 
the panel just off the lap so you can see the, vari the variable with the violin. I've, well, most of the time I've always done it to there, but this looks a bit better.